Hey guys, welcome back to Morgan Hill Farms. So I'm kind of in what I call the calm before the storm. I have so much that I need to get done before my main harvest of tomatoes starts to come in. These vines are loaded down. They are just starting to change color. We have been getting a few handfuls of cherry tomatoes here and there but my big tomatoes are getting ready to become mature. But before that happens, I have a lot of stuff that I need to get done and I kind of have been procrastinating and just doing none of it. I have about 14 watermelon transplants that I saved from my beds up by the house that just popped up randomly and I potted those up. So I need to find a spot for those. I need to find a spot for a bunch of Long Island cheese pumpkins that I was thinning out from my other beds when I planted those. I need to be looking at some bug pressure. I also have tomatoes popping up everywhere and it's shading out some of my other crops. So I need to pull those. That's very, very hard for me to do, uh, to pull these volunteer plants out. It's a uh, yeah, there's a song, but I think it's by the Pussycat Dolls, and it says, I hate this part right here, and this is the part that I hate, pulling out all of these volunteers so that my other crops can grow. But for today, I made the executive decision of what to do with these three rows here. I am going to plant dent corn, and what I'm going to try to do is I'm going to try to save my zinnias in that second row all the way down there and those green beans. So I'm just gonna try to plant a square of dent corn in the first two thirds of these three rows here. I will end up taking out these zinnias, unfortunately, and the dragon tongue bush beans, which is really sad because I wanted to save some of those for seed, but I do have enough of the seed up at the house. So that is what I'm working on today. And then I also have a plan for my empty row down beyond my tomatoes. I'm going to plant another row of Jacob's cattle beans. Those beans are really good as dried kidney beans. And it's just a really great staple to have on hand and just to be able to produce that for yourself. They produce a really great harvest. So I'll end up sowing about three rows of those Jacob's cattle beans in one of my 30 inch wide by 70 foot long row. So I'll get 210 feet out of that um, planting there. And I already have another 210 feet of those. So hopefully those will give us a good amount for the year. I just wanted to stop really quick and pop in in the middle of this. Um, does anybody else just feel sick ripping out perfectly healthy plants that are producing for you? Ugh, it's really hard. Even just the zinnias, which I get nothing out of except for beauty, that is, uh, that's killing me too. Anyways, I'm gonna persevere. We're gonna get back to work here. So I really did struggle with this decision to rip everything out this year to plant corn. I initially had said at the beginning of this year that I was not going to plant corn because it is just such a time intensive crop. It requires a lot of maintenance. It can have a lot of bug pressure. It can get blown down by the wind. And then when the harvest season is over, you're left with massive stalks that we're taking out by hand because there's no way that I'm getting a piece of machinery in my garden. But in the end, the dent corn really did seem to be like the crop that was going to provide us with the most food. And I would also be able to save seed from that. Um, if you guys have not purchased corn in the past, it can cost upwards of 35 to $45 a pound. And if you're doing long rows like I am, um, you can use half a pound to a pound of corn seed in one planting. So I got my dent corn from Johnny Seeds and I had picked it up last year and it was only a half a pound. I just kind of added that onto one of my other orders of seeds, not thinking about the amount of seed that I would need to actually plant a good enough size of corn to get a good harvest from. So I knew I was only gonna be able to do the front of these three rows. Now I did amend my rows after I ripped everything out with a nice layer of compost because corn is a very heavy feeder and you're gonna wanna fertilize that multiple times during its growing season. When you plant it, you plant it an inch deep. Corn does not have a great root system so you do wanna put it down a full inch, maybe even an inch and a half if you're really dry and it's really hot out. I have irrigation on my rows so I'm just putting it down about an inch and I'm planting them pretty heavily. I'm putting them every three inches just to ensure that I get good germination. I am at the point in the season where I cannot take the chance that I'm not gonna get it to germinate because I won't have the opportunity to reseed it again and get a harvest before 
the first frost comes. That and corn does struggle with certain pollination issues, so you really want it to come up all at the same time. So once they pop up, I will thin them to about six inches where one sprout has six inches on each side of it um, between the other plants. And then I also actually did a middle row in these three rows as well, but very, very sparsely. Now, once the corn emerges from the ground and is about four inches tall, I'm gonna go ahead and fertilize it with a balanced fertilizer like a 10-10-10, something with equal numbers. And then once it hits about 10 inches tall, I'm gonna fertilize it with a high nitrogen fertilizer. And I'll repeat that about every three to four weeks until I see the tasseling occur, which at that point I'll stop fertilizing it. Here are the Jacobs cattle beans that I told you about, a really nice size kidney bean. Now I was able to use my Earthway seeder for this. I attempted this on the corn, but I only have a seeding plate for sweet corn, not for dent corn, so it didn't work there. But I was able to use it for the beans and it made it so much easier to plant. So I finished that planting and about a week later, I got another order of that dent corn from Johnny Seed. So as soon as this came in, I grabbed the package from my front porch and ran down to the garden with it to seed the rest of those three rows. Originally, I was going to leave my green beans down there and not pull those, but I decided to go ahead and just rip them out because like I said earlier in a previous video, I have plenty of green beans up at my house already preserved and I don't need any more of those. So I felt like doing a larger block of corn would benefit us more. So the reason that I really wanna plant my corn in a block fashion, like you wouldn't wanna do two long rows, you might wanna do four long rows. And that is because of that pollination issue that we talked about earlier. So if you've ever seen an ear of corn and you've gone ahead and you know taken the husk off of that, you've seen all those little pesky silks in there. Well, each silk comes back to one kernel and that one silk has to be pollinated in order for that kernel to develop. And if it's not, then you're going to get an ear of corn that has a kernel here and maybe not one there, and it's gonna have a really bad look to it, and it's not gonna give you the harvest that you want. So that is why you really wanna make sure that you plant your corn in blocks. And so after I finished planting the corn, I went ahead and found some seed potatoes up at the house, actually in my pantry from the grocery store that had just sprouted, and I went ahead and got these in the ground in an empty bed that I had. I am really working to try to maximize my planting this year and get as much food in as possible. So thank you guys so much for hanging out with me today. If you enjoyed this video, please like, subscribe, and share, and we will see you in the next one.